Uh, this is uh, Richard back at you. Today we got Mr. Eaton's uh, trannies from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's uh, one about the nasty ones I've seen. It's like concrete all over it, but he cleaned it up quite a bit, but it's still pretty nasty. Uh, he wanted to bring it here to let us do all of our nice little tricks and stuff to it, put some uh, good clutches and stuff in it. We went ahead and pulled the pump out of it uh, because we needed to see if the pump was good uh, first so we could order parts. Uh, we had it uh, in here late in the evening, so uh, but the pump ended up being really good. All we got to do is put some gears in it. You can see here where the converter was wearing right through here. You can actually feel the lip. And you actually grab that with your finger. The rest of the body looks really nice. I mean, it looks brand new. I mean, on the bushing, you can see even the bushing looks really clean. Yep. You get over here, your intermediate piston. And you get over here, your pump stator, same way. I mean, it almost looks like never been used. It looks that it's nice. You don't see cut. pumps uh, very often come in here like that with 350s. But this is a roller bearing pump here. It's got the little plastic washer there. You got to be careful not to take that off and put your sealing ring in there. I've seen people do it before. The tranny not work, so it, it, it happens, believe me. Oh, I bet. <laughs> so, I'll get the passing gear cable off here. Now, this thing here uh, on a 350, uh, you can leave the passing gear cable off and it'll still work. It'll have passing gear up to about 45 mile an hour, and then it'll go away, and then it has to physically have the passing gear cable to uh, have any more than that after that mile an hour. Now if you have a BOP tranny, an Oldsmobile Pontiac, the cable physically has to be hooked up to make the tranny shift right. If you leave it on and just not hook it up, the tranny will stack shift. The modulator will not take care of that. Where a 350, you can take it off completely and that the modulator will still make it shift on its, its scheduled pattern. So, but a BOP will not, it has to have the cable. Um, I already took this. It's really nasty. Dang dinosaur, Ethan. Yeah, it is. Original. Yeah, I don't think she's ever been touched. This looks like a GM all the way. And we have started a fan page. Go ahead. No, you're good. I didn't want to hit the impact while you're talking. No, yeah, you're good. Go ahead. Um, so I want to introduce, uh, we did start on Facebook a fan page. It is hard to get a hold of us, guys, so real important that if you have an important question, post on there, try to get to you. Um, if not, please try to look it up to your best ability um, to where... We're not having, we have a very high call volume right now, so we're having issues with our phone. So if you can answer your question by yourself or if we can answer it on the internet, that's what we'd like to do. Yeah, ask the question on there and then we'll come back in the evening while I'm sitting at home and uh, try to answer that question for you. It'll make it a little bit easier on our phone. So, but yeah, this is just all stock stuff. I don't think this train has ever been. Yeah. Stock old Babbitt tile bushing. We'll be putting a brass one back in here, a lot better. Got your uh, okay. now there's a seal in here right here, and this is what keeps the yoke from leaking um, out the back of the, the little weep hole right here. I don't have a Chevy yoke, but I have a, a 400 yoke. There's a little weep hole right here, a vent hole, and uh, this will go up inside here, or actually on a, a 350, this will go on the outer edge. Uh, or, a, or a 700 the same way and seal it that way. No, that way no fluid can get in here. This is a 400. I'll just kind of show you the vent hole, but that's how that is. I thought I had a... They do make uh, different versions. This is a 4L60E style. So they do make different versions of these things. Of course, you got your speedometer gear right here. Now you notice these are really hard to get off. And you notice how I'm taking that off with my little screwdriver here. You can break this real easy. So you gotta be, have experience getting this off like I do it. So 
Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you how to do it or train you. That's just how I do it. Get them off and won't break them that way. So, but I do have a little deal uh, that I got that I made to put them back on. I, I put this on there like that. And then I'll take this on here and tap it on like that. That way I don't break it. It taps it on flush. If you tap this on crooked, this gear will pop instantly and break. So you got to be really careful about putting these back on a 350 or a 700 either. So real fragile. Just don't break it. Yeah, because they kind of hard to find. <laughs> got your old modulator valve here. I don't know what stripe that is, but we're going to go back with a high pressure one, a red stripe modulator. We actually have it over here. Don't have the red stripe on it no more like you used to. This actually got a red stripe on it. Is it? Mm -hmm. You're trying to see the stripe right there a little bit showing mm -hmm. up. We make a red, a black. Those are both really good modulators. These are high pressure ones. This old tranny is old though. Man, it's been in a long time. Dang dinosaur. Your vacuum modulator. Make sure that little hole is clear there. Where? Yeah, I have to. <laughs> that little hole. Oh, yep. A little tiny hole, a little piece of trash get in there. And you'll know it, it won't work right. I just couldn't see that thing for now. Little tiny hole. Get that pull back out of it. Uh, All right, went back. Damn. Okay. Put, that, that, that light was blinding me. It hit me right in the eye. Right. I can't see it. I'll get this out the real way. It's just got so much dirt in here. Mm -hmm. It's trapped in there. And that's just. Well, Ethan, you made him work today for his paycheck. Yeah. Dirt's hard as concrete. Yeah, that's crazy. Man. Normally that spring right there would push them right out, but there's so much dirt in them grooves right there. Now we're not going to leave the intermediate spring out. If, if you want to make it shift a little bit firmer in a second, leave this spring out. But always leave your wave on your intermediate clutch. Um, just by taking that spring out, your, inter your intermediate shift is going to be a lot firmer. This thing off here, you've got a recovery clip. You know, for as clean as this tranny is on the inside and for it to be as nasty as it is on the outside, it's kind of amazing. I thought that gear was loose, but not. But we'll put a new gear on here on all these because they get brittle after they've been used for a long period of time.
<laughs> You're talking good on me. Uh, I thought it was clean. I didn't look inside the pail. <laughs> but it was pretty nasty. Ethan, what have you been doing? Yeah, really. That thing is nasty. Everybody's going to know who you are at the end of this video, sir. Got the old, uh, Looks like nice screen, but you see it's already yeah. tore it off the edges there. So, wasn't filtering anything on that side anyway. <laughs> Get your detent linkage off there. You have a gasket for your filter. Got your valve body there and your manual valve. Now, since we're going to be making this a, uh, a manual capability on this tranny here, it's going to put it in drive, it's going to shift out normal. But if he puts it in low gear, it's going to go into low gear at 100 miles an hour. But it will not shift out until he moves the shifter into second or into third gear. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and weld this valve right here. We don't take it out or nothing. We'll just take a TIG welder and just weld it right there where it don't move to make it solid. It's the inner valve. You got one, two, the second valve in, weld that solid. And then now, once you do that, that's all you have to do. And now you have a manual 350 capability. So. Also, we're going to uh, enlarge these two feed holes right here. You can do about 120 thousandths, 130 thousandths be fine. And that makes a big difference on how the uh, shift valves react and stuff. So you really want to do that too. You got your uh, band servo here that applies your engine braking band. They make uh, two different versions of these, so you gotta be careful. So 350s are starting to be really scarce. We don't see a lot of them anymore. Uh, starting to really have a hard time getting parts for them and stuff. Now also you got a check ball here and a check ball here. They're both rubber. And instead of metal, I was gonna pick them out of the magnet, but you can't, they're just rubber. Don't ever use your rubber ones back because these are really tiny. They shrink. And these are almost gone. It'll just beat them to death where they uh, will totally disappear in the tranny. So, but right here and here, you want to leave, if you're building a race car or something, you want to leave this ball out and this one out. Always leave these two in. One more time. Leave these two out. Leave these two in. Drill these two holes for about 125 thousandths. Leave your spring out here. Leave this spring out. So that goes on the side. Leave that spring plumb out. And that's all you got to do to make this thing work really good. But the main thing that I want you to do is leave this wave in. If you take this wave out, it's going to break this sprag right here. It will shift way too hard. If you leave this wave out and this spring in the side of the case, and you leave your check balls out, and you drill your holes, you're not going to want this tranny to shift. It's going to shift that hard into second gear. So please, just leave this out, leave your check balls out, leave this wave in. Because this tranny, these clutches are so big in second gear that uh, they don't... They don't need any help. You 
can see how big these clutches are. They're massive. You can see they're starting to flake off though. Oh, yeah, oh I, look at that. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, I just start pulling off. So, just make sure you leave your wave in there. Now, here's your engine brake band. You can see here, too. And mm -hmm. I, You're just touching it. Yeah, I thought it just touched. It looked like it was flaking off. Man, where'd you pick up all that metal at in your hands? Where? That hand. That? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something was nasty. Yeah, I something. Now, if you look in here, looks like we got a lot of clearance here. Oh, wow. Look how much clearance we have in that clutch pack. Mm -hmm. That thing can be wore plum out when I. Oh, yeah, there's no clutches left. This one here is totally flaked out, too. Mm -hmm. And you notice this one here don't have nothing. Totally gone. Mm -hmm. Now on this tra this part here, we'll take and uh, add another clutch in that drum right here. Now what we do is we take and shave these pistons down 125 thousandths, and then uh, we'll add and put this in here, take this piston out, and now we'll add one more clutch. Instead of having four clutches, uh, we'll get five clutches in here now uh, by shaving this piston. So that's a must on a 350 because third gear is the weakest link in this tranny. So you always want to do that on every one you do. We take about five, ten pistons down, have a machine down here at a machine shop. Uh, let me take this out real quick. I'm going to go and stop this cameraman. Yeah, let me grab my glass so I can see this stuff. Show you down in here how to make this thing shift even better in third gear. What you're gonna do is take this out like this, and you're gonna take that piston out. Now you can see the difference in how much we shaved off of it. That's how much we shaved off. Just the thickness of a, a clutch and steel is all we did. Okay, so. Uh, but then when you get in here, you want this seal right here in the drum, you want to leave it out and take and just take it off and leave it completely off. Don't put it back in at all. Just throw it away. Now if this was a lockup 350, you cannot do that. If you leave that ring, if you leave this seal off, you won't have lockup. So you have to leave it on. But since it's a non-lockup, leave this seal off. It'll use the whole piston to apply third gear instead of this portion here. Uh, it firms up third gear a lot. And then we can get put this piston and get our extra clutches in there. Nice. So, now also when you leave this seal here off in this drum, on the stator here, you want to count, see these three rings right here? One, two, three. You want to leave that one off. Leaving this one off is the same thing as leaving the seal off in the drum. You can leave the seal on in the drum and leave the ring off. Same thing. But let's just leave them both off. Let's leave that ring off. Let's leave this seal off. Okay. Now, when we go back with our tranny, we're going to go back uh, with a wide drum, uh, bushing in this drum right here. See how much wider this bushing is than that bushing there? A lot better. A lot wider. You look here. This this bushing here fit that race really nice now. Full race. A lot full, fully on it right there. But the problem you get is when you put this uh, bearing in or this bushing in there. This bearing has a step on it. This step is actually broke off. It's supposed to be made on there. So I got to go find another bearing. But you put that bushing down just far enough where that step doesn't touch it. Because that step has to set down in there. If you leave that bushing flush and you go to put this together, you're going to cram that into that bushing. Because this bushing is wider. See? But this bushing supports this drum ten times better than this little narrow bushing when you're out hot rodding it. So... Now you get into your forward clutch. You might only want to look for bushing where on these shafts in both places. You got a bushing here, here, and one runs right through here. Same way here, you got a bushing that runs right here. Now some of them will have a bushing in here. Some of them will have a plastic uh, 
bushing that'll come out. You can just grab it with your finger and pull it out. Now this one here, we'll cut it out and put a new bush, a brass one in here, because that's what come in our kits. But if it comes out with your finger, you can put a bushing back in it, or you can put the plastic one that come out in it back in it. Now if you look at your forward clutch here too, it's burnt plum up too. You can see the gap here. And you can notice here it's almost stripped. The teeth ain't even half the width of this clutch here. See, here to here, the teeth are almost stripped. So this old tranny's had its uh, rough times. But on this one here, you're gonna have five clutches in forward on a 350 no matter what. But that piston there will not fit in this drum. So you can't do that. So I just set you straight there. You always wanna leave your wave in unless you're doing a trans brake or you got a high stall converter, real high stall or something. You can leave this wave out, put another steel in there. But I don't like putting my trannies in the gear. Even my race car, I don't like them banging in the gear and stuff. So I'd leave my wave in there, put new clutches in this thing and, and the forward drum will be fine. Same way with this washer right here. You got to look on this drum right here where this washer runs. A lot of times it'll be wiped out on this drum which will wipe out this washer. Now this plastic washer has already been worn almost down to nothing. It's got a big lip here on the side. Mm -hmm. Can you see that lip, Trent? Yep. Can you see that? It's almost wore all the way through. Now, what we do is we buy a, a complete washer kit. Comes with every washer in it, stuff like that, all metal instead of plastic. Uh, and then we'll go back here. Let me find it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is right there. See a nice metal washer instead of plastic, brand new one. See, and then we have all the rest of them for the rest of the training all the way through. Nice. So, let me tell you what, all your bushings. There's another four tab washer, which we got new ones, new ones over there. Three fifties are probably the worst. Come on. Is this my new set? Yeah, this is my brand new set too. I think your flashlight didn't I know, mine. I think it's oh my gosh. Yeah, let yeah. me see that. <laughs> yeah, I keep right I think my flashlight's dying, guys. <laughs> Okay, see nothing. Right. It's, at the, it's at the top. Yeah, yeah right there. Now it's like, yeah. Come on. I don't know. Let me get something over here. I'll get that dude out of there. We're going to get Terrible to get out of here. Just gotta do what you can do to get them out of there. Without hurting yourself. A lot of times that won't come out. I just take a log screwdriver, stick it in the end like that, and just kind of pull out on it. And you can kind of take and hit this. That come out easy. And I thought a lot of times we have to hit it a little bit harder. So just look at your planetary. Make sure your gears don't wobble. Your thrust washers are all intact. Make sure where your bushing runs here ain't wore out. So that's your bushing here. Flip it over, it's how it runs. Then you got your sun gear shell here, your sun gear. Of course, here we have a plastic washer. We could be going back with uh, your uh, brass, really nice washers here. And of course, get all of our bushings out of here. Look for any type of wear on either side of your sun gear. You don't see these shells break very often, but you still want to pull this out. You can take this out, pull this out, and make sure this ain't stripped. This is about normal, but I still will take it apart and look at it just to make sure it still looks in shape. And there 
here is our famous 350 snap ring. Oh, yellow. That's what I call it. I put this thing in all kinds of stuff. All kinds of different trannies. I use that, that snap ring right there. Yeah, buddy. I've been using this table a long time. And it appreciates it. <laughs> Can you tell them what kind of table it is? I think I did one time. But, uh, yeah, it's an old autopsy table that I got from a friend of mine that has a stainless company over here. Uh, they redid the hospital out here, and uh, he had a bunch of tables left, and I went and bought this one and a couple more I have at the house. But that's what this is. It's an old autopsy table. It works really good. I've drains all the fluid off into a bucket, stuff like that. We just throw all the trash into here and catches it really good. Pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. But here we got our 350 back again. You can see the clutches are starting to flake off. There's almost nothing on there. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's nothing on there. Oh, look, you can just see. Yeah. No, it is gone. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, there you go. Keep yeah, throwing it. <laughs> wow. Isn't that crazy? It's really cooked on the clutches. Same here. You want to, what we'll do is. Now this is a, uh, a short land uh, sprag assembly, low reverse sprag assembly. Now this has a narrow sprag in it. Now we, you know, three, that this is a 350, uh, we'll go out here and get a 4L60E uh, wide support and wide sprag assembly with a, sh with a shallow lip right here and put it in this 350 and now you just made this thing a lot stronger uh, in the back, especially in four wheel drives, race cars, stuff like that. But, uh, I think he's going to play with this thing a little bit, so we're going to help him out whatever we can. Look at these planets. Make sure the gears don't wobble. And thrush washer wear or anything like that. No bushing. Now, I like this. It does have a bearing back here. These are the better kind right here. They do make a three tab uh, washer style too. Uh, that they have, but uh, if we can get away with using this, uh, we'll we'll put this in there. But I'm glad to see this has it. So this tranny's probably got hard seals down in here, uh, all through the the tranny. That's another reason why this thing's failing and just, just totally wore out, basically. So if y'all need anything, give us a holler, Precision Transmissions. Y'all have a great day.